welcome home. Welcome to our new home. This marina really outdid themselves. We got flowers, we got <coughs> champagne upon arrival. You're on a new boat and like every little thing that the kids touch or the, the eyes, eye touch alone is like, just be careful then. And me too, of course. So we're here at In Na Trang, which is so beautiful in a blue watered marina, finally. Last time you saw us, we were in Ho Chi Minh. Elena and I went back to Australia for her best friend's wedding. It was so fun. I was wearing a captain's hat and it was amazing. <laughs> But that meant that we couldn't actually join the crew on their sail up to this marina. So Rapido, uh, the crew from there, Mark, Paul, Zam, etc., sailed the boat from Ho Chi Minh up to Nha Trang, which is where we are now. So they did the first sort of shakedown cruise. It's really good for the company to do that. So if anything goes wrong, they're like, like they're we don't all see the it. experts aboard. But it's looking pretty good, and it's looking like we can be out of this marina in a week and heading towards the Philippines. Yeah. With the kids, it's going to be our first big crossing. But just as we'd started to move aboard and we were feeling a tad relaxed, there was an unwelcome and unexpected spike in both cortisol and adrenaline, unrelated to the boat and rather to our visas and the uncompromising Vietnamese authorities. Huge problem with the visa. He might actually get blacklisted and not let back into the country. They could say, go to jail. Come and get us, security. You will not be able to catch us. Woohoo! Yeah, Who's this? Is this Lenny? <laughs> yeah. Come on in, bud. Hey there, Darwin. What do you got? What do you got? An apple? And what's this? Is this yeah. some kind of a shade cover? Yeah, let's leave oh, that let's there. Leave that mate. behind. Yeah. Something just to congratulate you on your new boat. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's Welcome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Redley. So there's a champagne breakfast. <laughs> Legit. Oh my god. On one of the other boats. Did you know that? Nah. Yeah. That's awesome. What do you got? Okay. Oh, no. We'll get it off. There you go. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. It felt so good and freeing to see our boat in a marina with the exit only a hundred meters away. We got the nicest welcome party from the owners of this marina here and all the staff and Mark from Rapido. It was so nice. They had some red champagne and we got flowers, some gifts. I got this scarf. The wife of the owner makes these silk scarves. Yeah. Got some presents today that we weren't expecting. You want to show me a dance? No, dance like this. Okay, maybe we shouldn't do that. Do you want to come drive the boat? Yeah. Come on. Hey Lenny, where are we going? We are going to South Australia. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can see in here it's spacious and really incredibly neat. Um, but it gets too hot in here when these are running, when this is running, to keep all of the electrics at the appropriate temperature, especially the batteries. So you can see we've got two fans here, uh, but we need another solution for that to make sure that yeah, that they don't, the temperature doesn't get too high. So that's one of the things that we've got to do. Let me just go speak to Mark. G'day, Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> so we're working on the autopilot. Yeah. The solent had been cut inappropriately. So that was sent off to China to Doyle Sales in China. Again, that's all very standard stuff, so we got all that sorted. Engine blower fan to change over. Um, yeah, and there's still, there's some, um, in the engine room, it's getting too hot. And that's it so far. At the moment, yeah. That's, um, that is legitimately incredible. Oh, bless you, Riley. What we didn't know yet was that after the proper shakedown cruise next week in some rough weather, that list would become a whole lot bigger. Subscribe to our channel, it's free, so that you don't miss the mayhem that's about to unfold. So our lives are still very much like really up in the air. We, the, the truck arrives tomorrow. Yeah, so the truck with all of our belongings that we shipped from the old boat in America to here, arrives tomorrow and you would not believe the dramas and the paperwork oh, we have to yeah. fill out just for them I... to move 
stuff within Vietnam. We had to write two detailed lists of everything in the boxes. Yeah. We had to use our passports to get into this marina. Yeah. Like, it is bizarre. I we don't can't just go here. sailing. Like, we need to be within eyesight of everyone. <laughs> it's nuts. Really? Yeah, well, you, they have to be able to see you. Lol. Weird. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know that. So yeah, we're sort of we're still staying over the road here. There's a there's a little resort which is I incredible, and we got it for like 150 Australian a night. Yeah. It's like a I'm gonna give it a five and a half star resort. Oh, it's incredible. It's the kids so are swimming lovely. around. Anyway, so we're sort of living there whilst we're still doing work on the boat, getting a taxi over in the morning, and yeah, just we're in between places still. We're not yeah. quite settled. I think tomorrow um, once we, we move forward. in, like with yeah. all of our boxes, I think the next day we can finally sleep aboard. We'll have all of our stuff again. Maybe. Yeah. We headed back to the hotel in the heat of the day after a busy morning trying to organise some things aboard and absorbing all we could from Mark. It was time to reconnect with the kids and try to chill out a bit. Darwin, our youngest, who's nearly two and a half, has thankfully gotten a lot better at swimming recently. It'll be our goal over the coming weeks to get him fully up to speed so that we can all really enjoy the beautiful waters of the Philippines. This coconut is the sweetest coconut I've ever tasted. I actually had to ask them if they were putting sugar in it, but no. Now trying coconuts from right here in the resort, maybe. <laughs> I don't know about that part. What's wrong, baby? Did you hurt your chin? Yeah. Why? How you going, mate? Good, I'm a bit exhausted today, actually. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for being the sponsor of today's episode. Since I've started talking about mental health, it's been crazy how many different people have just been reaching out, including friends and family. Everyone needs to talk to someone at some point during their life. Starting therapy can be pretty hard. Uh, people don't like to book the appointments, they don't like travelling to the appointments, and then the intenseness of a one-on-one, -on -one, person person-to-person interaction can be just sort of overwhelming for some people. And in today's modern era, with the advent of the internet, better help, it just, it, to me, it just makes perfect sense. Especially if you're remote like we are, we've got Starlink on the boat, and a, that, that combination is just incredible. So for remote working people, it's pretty amazing. BetterHelp will connect you with a licensed therapist who's trained and they're there to give you helpful and unbiased advice. And because it's online, it's pretty easy to swap someone out if, um, if it's not a vibe for you. I think that's one of the massive benefits for BetterHelp. So with BetterHelp, to get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and your preferences with regards to therapy. And in most cases, you're gonna get up and running within 48 hours. As in, you'll have a therapist within 48 hours like tailored to you as well, it's pretty good like that. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash sailing. That's betterhelp.com forward slash sailing. Once you are up and running, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. It can be text, chat, phone, video call. You can message your therapist at any time. You can schedule a live call if and when it's gonna be convenient for you. With BetterHelp, and this is the thing that I, I think is important, I keep harping on about, you can expect the same professionalism that you would if you were going to a traditional therapist. But with someone that's custom picked for you, way more scheduling flexibility and it's gonna be cheaper as well. So as I mentioned before, you can get 10% off at betterhelp.com forward slash sailing. That really helps us out. So if you were thinking of doing this, we'd really appreciate it if you used our link. Um, I'm gonna put that in the description below, more than likely in the top comment. Thank you all so much for following along and thanks BetterHelp for being the sponsor for today's video. So two things, where we would like to go based not on the weather is directly where the wind is coming from, which is often the case. So, oh, and then also there's a typhoon coming. All four models that I'm looking at on Predict Wind are all agreeing, so it's definitely coming. It's too far out to decide exactly where it's going to be going but it's going straight over Palawan at this point, which is we would be sailing directly into a hurricane. It's too far out to make any solid decisions just yet, but one good option for us would be to sail south of where it's going to be to Kota Kinabalu, and then climb Mount Kinabalu 
with Lenny and Darwin. Which takes two days, we're not doing that. <laughs> That'll be alright. Are you kidding? Stick him in a backpack. We've taken Lenny into some pretty wild spots. Yeah, probably we don't do that, but I'd love to climb that mountain. Maybe yeah. we could just walk up and down the beach a little bit. Yeah. Make a sandcastle. The big wee wee. You did a wee wee? No, the big wee wee. Where? There. Oh, okay. No, I know that. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> we've been here, there and everywhere recently. Hitting the gym has been something we've implemented into our daily routine to keep us grounded, motivated and energetic. Oh! <laughs> Are you kidding? And we have the lovely Melly with us again. How are you Melly? Uh, oh, good, thank you. Always good? Yes. <laughs> So this morning we're actually doing the <laughs> we're doing the handover with Mark, which basically means he teaches us everything that him and the crew learnt on their sail up here, which is all really important stuff. Um, so that's happening this morning. We're gonna leave the kids with Melly here in the pool. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> They'll be jumping off the back of the boat together in no time. It's gonna be so much fun. Do you think we'll ever walk to this marina? No. It feels like because it's it's hot enough that you really want to conserve your energy. Mm. <laughs> like it's so if you got hot. here, the walk here would take ten percent out of your tank. Completed the one. Hey, we have a boat. The yellow boat is ours. Level. La vagabond. La vagabond. Okay. Thank you. I love that we can just say the yellow boat is ours because there's no no yellow boats around. It's gonna be a blessing and a curse, I reckon. We're going to take the OC tender for a burn. OC tender, best tender in the world. We're probably not allowed to, but it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? <laughs> Let's see how we go. OK, go. You ready? Yeah. taste of freedom for a while. Back on land, things were not going well with Riley and Darwin's visa situation. Explain what's going on with our visas. Uh, yeah. So when we entered, we had to get two visas on arrival because the visas we had got before coming, which is the right thing to do. There were some typos. At the airport, they should have put the stamps in the passports. And on top of that, they expire in four days. As long as it's within the expiry date, you can enter, then you have 30 days from there. Now they're saying that that's not okay, so uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but... Well, what we do know is that Fung is going to talk to Hung, and then we'll have uh, some more definitive information on our visas. Those are legit. That's actually what's happening. And Fung's you know what's talk funny? That it might not be a problem. We can pay an overstay fee when we leave, but the problem is we're coming into this marina every day, and if they see the expired visa, they might not let us in. So it's like a marina issue, not a country issue. There's passport control at the gates out here to come in and out of the marina. <laughs> this is wild. Oh my god, I could not, I could not live here. There's just too many rules. Speaking of rules, Mark was about to run us through the very specific do's and don'ts and little quirks of La Vagabond that he'd already discovered. We are troubleshooting the second autopilot system. So we've got two autopilot systems, um, which are, I wouldn't say completely separate, but very, very separate. So we, if one was to stop working, hopefully number two would be working. That's the, the theory behind setting up two entirely separate autopilots. Number two, the clutch, we think isn't engaging because when we run one of the tests, which it's failing, the wheel isn't trying to move at all. Mm. So Mark, Mark think it's a, thinks it's a clutch thing. Mark thinks he might have found the issue. The clutch, that plug was hanging off. Oh. That, so the clutch, clutch, so you've got, this is the power in. Yeah. So it's from the power. Yeah. This is the power out to the motor. Yeah. And then this is the clutch that was hanging off, so... Well, there you go. Often the problems are simple. Still not getting clutch engagement, so... 
We've got Dylan here from OBMG helping us troubleshoot. Engages, it ramps up from a very small amount. Right. So yeah. what you could do is you could do He's the run test cooking. on Pilot 1 that we know works. Yes. The, the voltage. Phew, there she goes. Well done, mate. The ghost at the helm. So I just went and played with the kids for a little bit and their little friend Redley. Uh, but I'm heading back to the boat. Our boxes still haven't arrived. I keep looking out for them. They're meant to just deliver them. Um, I was hoping that could be a bit earlier because it's just, it's getting hotter and hotter. Hopefully they show up soon so I can start unpacking. Very keen to get decorating. Want. What are you up to, Riley? Oh, I'm just learning about the rudder. There's a, it can, there's a shear pin and it, so if we hit something it'll kick back. We can also pull on this line here to pull it back down into place or pull on them to, to lift it up. Um, and it goes up and down. So there's a, there's quite a bit going on here and so, it yeah, is freaking beefy, dude. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, it's good. It's strong. How am I going on first day of uh, boat school, mate? Well, it's a pretty steep learning curve, you know, there's lots to learn. What, so. What's my uh, knowledge comprehension, do you, is there going to be a multiple choice questionnaire after the... Uh... I think so, we got the, the big test is you've got to run the boat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going, Pants? Good, yeah, just been yeah. organising stuff, making sure the life jackets are all up to date and Have you learned green lights on. Things so that when I forget, inevitably. I have, I've been video, videoing things, like just how to turn on things and, and whatnot. Little um, personality traits that La Vagabond the Third already has. Yeah. So if we forget, it's on my phone. Would you say she's idiosyncratic from like out of the gates or? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're in a weird mood. Let's go get some food. Oh, sorry for <laughs> being weird. Um, so I was just ringing up about the visas. So Elena just sent a message. The latest thing from Rapido is that if um, they expire, then we're not allowed on the boat at all. So we can't even walk down to the marina and go onto the boat. So whatever we can do to just get hold of a visa renewal, um, we just got to do that like as soon as possible. And there is no like inside country um, visa renewal. Okay, let me start a group chat with Fuong. This rain really suits the mood we're all in today. Overnight we've just figured out that um, Riley can't come into the marina, he can't hop aboard the boat because of the problem with him and Darwin's visa. They're gonna have to leave the country by themselves. Um, so yeah, he's at the hotel today. I'm gonna dissect all these boxes and put some stuff away and then get FedEx to take the rest of it. And yeah, huge problem with the visa. He might actually get blacklisted and not let back into the country which would be really bad. Um, the crew would have to sail our boat to Thailand or something. But yeah, things are developing every minute. Hoping for the best here. And Zam has just arrived. He's upgrading the Traveller today. And Mark's doing something in the galley. Oh, he's fixing the bin because it doesn't quite shut when you shut the um, galley doors. I'm honestly pretty overwhelmed, hey? It's all just a bit of a mess, to be honest. It's not the move-in that I wanted, but I'm getting there, and it's the best, it's the best I can do right now. Just take a second to look at this. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I'm getting through it. <laughs> like, look at the shit I'm dealing with here. I mean, it's just dealing with me. 12 months ago, but <laughs> this is a um, what you practice stitching on. So I've obviously thought that this is, it is good to bring along. I think we should all practice stitches because you do forget how to do them. And it's very satisfying, it's squishy. But like, where do I put this? <laughs> 
Oh my god. My ADHD brain is <laughs> not loving today. <laughs> but we'll have the boat to ourselves after this big shakedown cruise and getting out of the country. Things will be a lot more chill. It's just um, we only have a limited amount of time here in this marina, so we've got to get going. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go. Gotta leave. It was really funny, actually. Oh my god, the fire! Whoa. We got interviewed when we first came to this marina by like maybe like the tourism board here or something, and the young guy he um, didn't know anything about sailing understandably he's not a sailor but he asked us a question like oh what could you recommend to people who are thinking of sailing here and Riley's like uh well you can't <laughs> and he was like oh okay <laughs> oh yeah well that's no joke Riley was feeling pretty down not being allowed on the boat today and knowing he had to go on a big international flight tomorrow with Darwin these specific days were when he was supposed to be intensely doing a handover and learning before what was going to be an incredibly rough and difficult first crossing. Anyway, I found an excuse to take him shopping for some things we kind of didn't need just to try and cheer him up. And I don't think it worked. We're having a lot of trouble finding containers. Our taxi driver's taken us to a big mall and there's no, not even any shops in the mall. <laughs> it's all like coming soon. And to make matters worse, Lenny came down with a virus and developed crew. <clears throat> Luckily, we've learned not to travel anywhere without the right medicine that he needs. Thanks, babe. Coming up to the airport now, really got no idea what's gonna happen. They could say, go to jail, really. Um, they could say go into this like immigration holding area. They could say they could not notice and sort of let you straight through. Probably there will be a lot of discussion and sort of arguing about what what's happened and why we've overstayed our visa. Um, and there could be there might be uh, a monetary exchange of some kind, which we're vaguely prepared for. Maybe not to the extent which you might, might require. Are you frustrated, darling? Me too, dude. The show had to go on. Whilst Riley and Darwin went on their visa run, I did my best with the rest of the unpacking before myself and the Rapido guys would be taking the Vagabond out for some more test sailing and to work the onboard systems again. Obviously the more problems we can find early on, before it's just Riley and I on our own in the big wild ocean, the better. Keeping hope as higher as I can, moving on, embracing destiny, carry on. Despite all my past, into tomorrow's bright and shiny day. Today's a day of sailing and we've got some wind. We're only allowed to go back and forth from the marina. Uh, but we just hit 10 knots with very little wind. Just made a couple of coffees and I really wish Riley could be here. But at the same time, I'm happy he's not because I'm learning more with him not here because it's the default, right, for <laughs> the man to take charge and take the helm and crank the winches, but it's only me now. I'm the captain today. huge success. I finally unboxed everything and I'm just washing all of the various Tupperware and <laughs> cups and bowls and plates. Picnic folk do an amazing job with all their art on their plates and cups and bowls. Seeing through my time, imagining how life used to be. I was so amazed by the tacking angles on the Rapido. They had to be seriously close to 90 degrees, which is basically dead upwind. That's like a racing monohull. When you're trying to make way, that is such a huge win. I'm going ahead, not turning back. I'm moving on. Don't 
Don't forget to like the video, guys, and join us as our family reunites and we depart next time. <laughs> that next trip is bonkers. The engine broke, we got 44 knot gusts, there was three plus meter waves, squalls, lightning, thunder, Darwin spewed on the bed. Yeah, honestly a really tough time. Um, so join us for a whole of 600 nautical miles of hell. <laughs>